What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my adventures in Hotline Miami. Uh, the more I play this for the, uh, the little mini-adventure series here, the more I think that I need to do a full Let's Play of this later down the road when I have, uh, my thoughts more well-composed. Oh god, I'm going through all my, uh, my doors cautiously, because I forgot I was back in my house. Oh, where's my date this evening? Oh, one more thing I should mention, actually. About, uh, my exploits in Vegas, since I kind of, uh, got sidetracked when I was talking about that. I had, the last time I was there, I might have talked about this before with Mike, I had a horrible experience, complete with people stopping me every five seconds with, uh, with strip club tickets. Uh, there was insomnia and jet lag and log treks back and forth to the, to the Cosmo for work, even though work that day happened to be fucking awesome, or that weekend. Uh, all of this was exacerbated by a, a god-awful hotel which used to go by the name the Imperial Palace. It, when I arrived there, was under construction, which which is why I had to get dropped off in a in a parking garage three blocks away. That was undergoing construction, so I stayed in the Imperial Palace. It's a filthy, depressing hovel of a hotel. Uh, oh yeah, and again, don't get confused by the fact that they were rebranding and reconstructing it, reconstructing it to be the quad because so many people com fucking complained about it. It's a terrible, terrible place. The silver lining in that story, though, is I did come back with some good stories. Plus, I got to fire a grenade launcher while I was down there, and I got four free nights at any of uh, Caesar's hotels as compensation for just how disgusting and awful that hotel is. So, fool me once. Good stories. Fool me twice. Better stories, maybe? I'll be going back in July for Evo. I want to kill one of these guys with the door. There we go. And that guy didn't even chase me out. Cool. So they take a brief moment to react. If you fire a gun, it tends to attract a lot of people in the area, but they'll funnel through doorways, and if you have enough rounds left, it, like if you're using anything other than a double barrel, it'll usually be fun. I'm going to pick the pipe back up because I don't believe that guy will pull a gun as soon as I go after the guy on the right. Hopefully my guess is correct. Nope, just another pipe. Das Pipu. I don't respect the pipe at all. Oh! E. Panic reactions. They happen a lot in this game. <laughs> Can't kill that guy yet. Um, I believe there are just the three guys in that room. And they patrol around. I really, really don't like this room. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bait him back and silently kill him with a baseball bat, and then that won't alert those two. There we go. That's what... Oh, he killed me. Timing can be a bitch sometimes. Okay. Do pretty much the same thing this time. Worked like gangbusters. Yep. Oh. Little bit of a hitch that time. Wait, what did I... Oh, okay, I silently killed that guy and just dealt with Das Pipu Man before. But he's not patrolling quick enough and I see a machete in the distance. So, I guess... Now is the time! Now is the winter of my discontent! Their discontent, your discontent, our discontent, all the discontent. Ugh, this is so risky. Okay. I love it when they just line up like, oh! I thought he was dead. I thought he was stacked on top of the other guy and they both just got double killed. Oh, this is one of my least favorite early on rooms. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the pipe at that guy, run up, bash his head in. Hopefully I don't get spotted with the dude with, by the dude with the double barrel there. Those guys should not come through the door and I will be okay for the first part of this, but that's not the hardest part. But now I have the pipe back, I have a gun. I believe they patrol close enough that I can do that. Oh god, I was just swinging wildly. What's the uh, what's the melee equivalent to spray and pray? I could take this guy down, no problem. The rest of the room is where the problem comes in. The little, the, the little part in the beginning is not quite so bad. 
This part can be dicey though, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of baiting. Uh, there's a, a pull cue on the table. I'm amazed that they don't see the guns flying around. They don't get even just a little bit suspicious. So I don't want to fire any guns because all of these dudes, including the patrol, are going to come funneling from different directions, that door and that door. So what I want to do is I want to hopefully bait this guy, show myself briefly, maybe get him to come through the door. No, he's... Oh, shit, he fucked off too quick. Now his back is turned. It makes him harder to bait. Boom. That's what I wanted to do. Now that gives me access to this guy. Wait, what's going on? Oh, my cursor was locked on someone for some reason. Come on, I just want him to patrol close enough that that guy won't trigger. Um... Fuck! I should have locked onto him. Now I just have to not get impatient when I redo this. That is the biggest killer, is... That's what I really appreciate about this game, much like Super Meat Boy, is it's fairly tough and fairly unforgiving, but it, getting back in the action is instant. They don't make you backtrack through the entire level, just the floor you're on. It can still be a little bit tedious, and it can still be super fr- Oh, I forgot about him. It can still be super frustrating. Oh, and I crossed into that room somehow. And when- you can really feel when the frustration gets to you in this game. You start making really dumb mistakes. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no, please. He got too close to the room. I guess he heard the pipe clang against the wall, and he opened the door to see what was going on. And now I have an issue, because with clear line of sight from that door, he can spot me. So I have to figure something out. Like, killing at least one. That works pretty well. I can go up and punch him, at least. Surprise, motherfucker. Now I have a knife. I can kill throw. Could, if I wanted to. Actually, I can kill throw that guy. That might be really, really helpful. That patrol is going freaking out, though. Oh, that's the guy from that room. Shit, why are you being an asshole to me, guy? Hmm, do I have a gun somewhere down here? I have a shotgun. I can lead him out to the sh and run for the shotgun. Let's do it. Wait, where did I pick that gun up from? What the fuck? Oh, well, that's fine. Okay, do I have anyone coming? No one coming. Still that guy, though. So, I just want to pop in real quick. Shoot, get out. Done. Oh, he didn't even hear me. What the fuck? Wow, they're not reacting. That's weird. Dead. He's not reacting either. Dead. I'll take that. Now I believe I have a boss fight downstairs. So... Let me just grab a different gun for this fight. A fully loaded one. Preferably. Yeah, you guys can't get everything by myself! Nah, so angry! Oh god, that's doing nothing! Nothing! Oh no! I meant to pick that gun up! Hopefully that's the right one. It indeed is, and that one has six bullets fully ready to go. Now I believe... Oh, okay. It's three no matter what, as long as you have a shotgun or the double barrel. Which is a shotgun. It's a sh 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 shotgun. You guys, it's a shotgun. Ooh, and you gouge his eyes out. Extra nasty. And you can save the, uh, the blow-up doll-looking damsel here. It's no problem whatsoever. Not for one as heroic as dear old Jacket here, who just leaves a trail of blood and viscera in his wake. <laughs> like a true 1980s cocaine-fueled Miami hero. The game has a way of, of actually doing it, what it's trying to do and making you feel just kind of icky and gross and like... I don't know if this is the wording, but like sweaty and feverish and, and, and just bad in a way but still being fulfilling in that really, like, visceral, satisfying way.
I don't know. I, I it, the game gives such such mixed messages. Albert Hoffman would be proud of this game. This game is like Hunter S. Thompson's breakfast nook. Best enjoyed with a co with a salt shaker full of coke. Not that I would know what that is like. Uh, LSD one one time, and not as as intense an experience as I would have hoped to have. I feel like that. Is, is the kind of thing that will one day come back to haunt me is that line like if nothing else that I've said throughout all of these episodes of this let's play it's somehow gonna be that uh whatever <laughs> the whole 80s motif of this game makes me think about how much people like to talk about how awesome 80s cartoons were but I have to imagine that those same people say that while secretly praying no one brings up things like uh, Godzuki or the Gary Coleman show where Gary Coleman dies and becomes an angel who fights the devil whose name is Hornswoggle. <laughs> Or the, or the Super Globetrotters, where one of the Globetrotters' superpowers is that he is spaghetti. Oh god, in Gilligan's planet, let's... Let's break these things down. Uh, let's not for Oh, let's not forget that there were not one, but two different cartoons about laser tag. One of which was about a time-traveling uh, laser tag champion who, who had to use their laser tag skills to stop a time-traveling lunatic who wanted to kill her ancestors so they can't invent uh, like this product placement laser tag gun that manipulates subatomic particles. Oh, and then there's, of course, there's Gilligan's Planet, which was only second to the movie where the Globetrotters teamed up with Gilligan to play basketball against evil Cybermen. It was like Space Jam if all of Space Jam's writers had spent six hours freebasing Drano. Uh, Gilligan's Planet was a spacefaring animated Gilligan's Island spin-off, which featured a laugh track. Now, I know what you're thinking. There were Scooby-Doo episodes, a lot of them, which featured a laugh track. And, and let's be honest, I like Scooby-Doo. Back in the day, I did. But neither one of those things made sense to have a laugh track on, because you can't even have the illusion that they were filmed in front of a live studio audience. Even even things that live action shows that aren't filmed in front of a live studio audience and feature the laugh track at least give you that fucking illusion. Oh, and don't even get me uh, started on the Street Sharks. Rad concept. Awful, awful show. I highly encourage you to watch the Street Sharks. Biker Mice from Mars. St the 80s and the 90s cartoons would, were filled with such abject bullshit that we accept so readily because they were just so goddamn radical. <laughs> and so, like, so terrible in a great way. Like, B-movie quality terrible, where you just have to appreciate the awfulness that you're constantly being bombarded with. That's why I love, I think that's part of why I love uh, Batman and Robin so much, is it's because it, it's... It's perfectly content to not just be campy, but just to be flat out embracing how fucking bad it is. It's really, really glorious in that way. That, and it's just, it's, it's silly and it has fun. Uh, I don't know if this guy can actually see me through the glass here. Most of the time you can. I should go on with the, the uh, the mask that keeps dogs from seeing me because I fucking hate dogs. Uh, and that is not just within the context of the fact that dogs and games are usually assholes. I actually have a real-life phobia of dogs that stems from the time when I was like eight years old. And my my aunt's dog, who just recently died, burn in hell, that fucker. 
uh, tried to absolutely rip my shirt apart like that. And, you know what, to be fair to this dog, it's not its fault that it has, like, an instinctive reaction to try to rip the jugulars out of little asshole children, because it was a rescue... Like, the dog was not a rescue dog, it was rescued from its very unfortunate circumstances, uh, where some little pieces of shit children attempted several times to just drown it. Oh, can I not punch dogs to death? That's a major mark against this game. This game. And yeah, some little pieces of shit tried to drown it. And then as it grew up, it became very defensive and hostile and aggressive towards children. Of which I was one once. I bet I can just run in, punch that guy, and maybe get the drop on the baseball bat guy before anything bad happens to me. Too worried about that dog, though. I've been telling this dog story for too long to do anything significant. Fuck it. Let's go. Oh no, that guy's gonna get back up. Luckily, he. <laughs> Luckily, his pathing screwed up. Oh, everyone's pathing is screwing up so favorably for me. Oh, it's great. Now I can shoot the dogs. But yeah, that dog trying to, like, leap through a, a glass sliding door with murder in its eyes at me uh, kind of screwed me up around dogs for a long time. Only now I'm, like, only starting to get a little bit comfortable around dogs, and that's just, like, nice, docile, familiar ones. Like Mike's dog. Mike has the sweetest dog in the entire world. I love her. Oh, I wish someone would patrol down here other than that dog. That guy with the shotgun's too far away. I, I'm gonna try to kill this dog with the door again. It didn't work, though. Can't kill the dogs with the doors, unfortunately. Also, I still don't like the fact that I can't see that dog. Did the dog just fuck off because I failed so many times? There's my opening! Okay. I actually have to focus a little bit more on this one. Because I'm... Uh, screwing up a little. Not as much as you think. The game is actually just this unforgiving and this uh, difficult. Yo, the devs actually posted a really detailed blog of how... There's the dog! Of how the AI works. Because they got so many complaints about the AI being random. And it's actually very, very manipulatable. If that's a word. And predictable. So, let's... Make sure the dog is not gonna sniff us out like we are a giant walking plate of bacon. And, uh... Whoa! No! The patrol patterns tend to piss me off. And if I start with the Don Juan mask, I forget what room I'm going into. Uh, it's a pain in the ass, because you can start with the knife, or you can start with the perk that doesn't... that keeps dogs from detecting you as easily. And both of those are infinitely better than Don Juan mask right now. Uh, the first time I played, this was the exact situation I found myself in. And then, subsequent playthroughs, I let the dog out. Who? 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 Maybe this is the key! Maybe I just glitched the dog on the corner. Take every opportunity. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Somehow, neither of them saw me. I guess the tub gave me the uh, line of sight against them. <gasps> Ooh! Puppy! Man, I never want to kill the Call of Duty dog, but sometimes the game doesn't give me many options. Gave me this sweet machete, though, for doing so. All right. We know how the door parade works. Oh no! We, maybe we don't. But he's just gonna join his bloody corpse friends in the hallway there. Like a nitwit. Alright, now I have plenty of guns. Gun you Gun... Munition. <laughs> um... I can't see well into the hallway. That's a problem. But there's only this exit and the glass on that side, so they'll all come in from this way if they hear me. So let's go take care of him. Okay, and 
and then there's just you, and I have bullets left for you. Oh, there's you too. That's fine, I still have bullets left for you. Now I can move on to the next stage, finally. So, that's gonna do it for this episode, folks. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.